write 2.1 grams, which is this rounded to two significant figures, right? You are off in both cases by one sig fig. They don't care. If you're off by one sig fig, you're fine. If you're off by two sig figs, so if you write 2.0720, they will take off a point. Okay, so this has five sig figs when the correct answer is three here, okay? But here's something I've always seen. I've never seen them have more than four significant figures on a problem. I've never seen them have less than two. It's either two, three, or four. So my rule is what? Go with three, because you can never be wrong. So your answer is always put three. I mean, if you see there's four, go ahead and put four. I mean, but just, you can never get it wrong if you have three significant figures. Now, just to recall, there's this whole thing with the zeros. This number has leading zeros, and leading zeros don't count, so this has two sig figs, right? If I have a trailing zero, trailing zeros are weird. If I have 2,000, that has one significant digit. But if I have trailing zeros with a decimal, those all count. All right, and there is one that's kind of weird, okay? If I am talking about pH and or pOH, okay? If I say 3.72, how many significant digits if this is a pH? This has two sig figs. You see, Mr. Bergman, that makes no sense. All right, with pH, it's sort of a special rule for pH and pOH. You only count the numbers past the decimal. You do not count the number in front. The number in front actually is the power of 10. If you recall, um, pH is the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen. So the real number that's actually measuring is the number that came in the calculator. So if I've got you know 5.32 times 10 to the minus fourth, and if I take the negative log of that, let me get my calculator out. So if I take the log, or negative log, of 5.32, remember we use the double E button, and negative 4, I get a pH of 3.27408. So I take the negative log of this, I get 3.27409. That's what my calculator says. How many stick fix can I keep? 3 here. So the real answer is 3.274. Because this 3, if you really look at it, is related to this 4 right here, the power of 10. It's off by 1 because of the fact that it's 3 or whatever. But that's why this is giving you the power of 10 is what it is. Now, the very odd thing, I'll see this one. 12.72 uh, has how many sig figs in it? If it's a pH or a pOH. Just 2. This is where people, particularly when you have high pHs, this is where people tend to truncate it. They'll say, well, I'm supposed to have three significant figures, and so they write 12.7, and now they're going to be wrong, because now they've only written one significant figure. You see? They think they have three, but they've only got one, because the 12 it relates to the power of 10, and the 7 is the rest of it. So watch that when you do pHs and pOHs. That's where a, it's a common mistake that you want, don't want to make. Okay? And then, of course, the rules on multiplication and um, addition and subtraction and all that stuff. What do you do with that? So if I, I think that's the next page. Boy, I left way too much space. Um, multiplication and division. If I've got, if you get your calculators, would you go ahead and get those out? So what do we got here? We're going to do a little density problem. I've got a very small volume, and I've got this many grams. What would be the density of this substance? So what does your calculator say this answer is? Somebody with a calculator here. 8.32 divided by 0 0.015. What do you get? It'd be a big number, I think. Huh? 5, 5. That's pretty good. How many sig figs in 8.32 here? Three, and how about in 0 .015? How many digits can I keep? So what do I do? You're gonna truncate it here, so you write 55, right? No, it's 550. 
You have to make that four a zero. Don't say 55. You still have to have 550 something, right? But you have to lose the four, right? So you're only as good as your worst measurement. So what's your worst measurement? The, the two digits down here on the bottom. And so that's where you need to kind of pay attention, right? You're only as good as your worst measurement. You need to multiplication and division. So um, what if I have uh, 0 0.0018 times 0 0.008? I don't know what this is, but we'll do this. So what does your calculator say the answer is? Somebody. 1.503 to negative what? Five. Five. All right, let's count our sig figs. In our first term, I have how many sig figs? Two. In my second term, I have four. This zero counts. He's a trailing zero, but there is a decimal. So I can only keep two. So the answer is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5. One thing nice about scientific notation is you just count the digits. It's always going to be, um, you just count the first one, two digits, you know, and then you just truncate. If this zero is a six or something like this, if this had been a six right here when we did the math, that would make this what? 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. It isn't, so, but just kind of keep that in mind. What about this whole addition and subtraction? What if I take um, 102 plus um, 8.36? So it's 102 plus, I'm going to line it up, 8.36. Well, that's 110.36. That's what my calculator says. The real answer is. You can only be as good as your worst measurement. My worst measurement is actually from the 102, and it's only accurate to the ones place, so I need to round to the ones place. So actually, this is a little tricky. What's the answer? Is that correct? No. I had to put a decimal here because the, I need to indicate that that zero is actually a measured number. So I can't say, you know, if it was 112, if it added up to 112, I can just write 112. But because that's a zero, I do have to indicate that that zero is significant, so I have to put a decimal there. Or, of course, the weird one, right? I think this is like, what's 100 plus 67? You'd say it's 167, right? And you'd be wrong. No. What is 100 plus 67? It's 200. What? Remember, 100 is only one significant digit. 67 has two significant digits, but this is accurate to the hundreds place. You get 167, but you need to round to the hundreds place. How do you round to the hundreds place, 167? You have to round the six up there, and you get 200. That is a weird one, isn't it? Now, what this would be very unlikely, because what you're essentially saying is you have a crappy measurement in the number 100, and you have a relatively decent measurement in 67. Maybe it would be like this. Um, from here to Denver, it's 100 miles. Uh, let's say I take a particular point in Denver. I'm going to take um, the Pepsi Center. From right where we're standing to the Pepsi Center is 100 miles. Okay? Is that accurate? It's probably close-ish. Ish. But it's a crappy measurement. But let's say then from, from the Pepsi Center to Fort Collins, I have a friend who took his GPS out and drove from the Pepsi Center to his house in Fort Collins. I think that's about 67 miles. And he measured it. It was 67 miles. So he has a good measurement. And then we have this Bergman estimate. How far is it from here to Fort Collins? About 200 miles. That's all I can say, because the first measurement isn't done very well. The second one is really good. Usually we like to add measurements that are of similar levels of accuracy. This, so this is a sort of a weird extreme case. Okay? All right. And we have one more topic to cover today. Let's talk about SIG or um, dimensional analysis. So next page. How do we solve dimensional analysis problems. Hold that thought while I think about this here. All right, so dimensional analysis. You understand dimensional analysis. This is where we do the railroad track thing, right? So um, uh, I don't know if I'll do a one-dimensional problem for you. Well, let's do one. Okay, um, this... Uh, September, I think I told you I'm going to do a triathlon. Actually, it's a 
It's an aqua bike, so it's only two events, but what the heck. I'm going to ride my bike 112 miles in this race. How many kilometers am I going to travel? What do you do? You may not know the conversion. I have it in my head, so you're good. What do I do? So how do I do that? Miles on the bottom, kilometers on top. I know that one mile is equal to 1.6, I think it's 08. I may be wrong, but it's, it's, that's pretty close. 1.6 something kilometers. I think it's 1.608. The miles cancel. How many kilometers? So all the guys who are going to be uh, doing this race from uh, Europe, they would not even think of it as 112 miles. They would think of it as, someone with the calculator, 180 is it right at 180? 0 0 0.096 kilometers. Of course, they would just call that 180 decimal kilometer because uh, this does have three significant digits, and I'm assuming I did this right, uh, and it has four significant digits. So it's a 180-kilometer race for them. Good? Remember how to do that? Hopefully that's, that's going to come hold hat. Okay, now what if I have a more multidimensional problem? So on top of page 5. So if I want to do um, 55, I'll just do something besides 55 miles per hour. Let's say that, um, well, I hope to travel. Let's see. We'll do this. I hope to travel on my bicycle in the race. I hope to travel about 21 miles per hour on average over the 112 miles. How many meters per second will I be traveling on average? It'll vary because, you know, when there's a hill, I'll go slow and when it's downhill or I'll go fast. It's actually a pretty flat course. but So what do I need to do? Go miles to kilometers. And I'm going to assume, by the way, that I'm going to write one mile is 1.60. You know, it's 1.609. I remembered now. It's coming into my brain, and that should be miles. The miles cancel. Now what do I do? Kilometers to meters. Now, do you know that in your head? It's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Kilometers cancel. Now I can work with time. Now, tricky on this, hours is on the bottom, so to cancel off hours, you have to put it on the top. So hours to seconds, one hour. And you know how many seconds in an hour? I'm going to do a quick, there's 3,600. You can do uh, hours to minutes and then minutes to seconds if you want, but you just do this. And then the uh, hours cancel, don't they? And I'm left with, if you look here, meters per second. So remember, numbers on the top are multiplied. Numbers on the bottom are divided, so it's going to be 21 times 1.609 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. How many meters per second? Every second, how many meters will I travel? 9.4, maybe? Because I only have two significant digits, so 9.4 meters every second. That's pretty fast if you think about it. Nine meters is well, 30 feet-ish. So 30 feet a second, that's when you're going 21 miles an hour. So I think it's possible. I did a race, or a race, I did a training ride on uh, on uh, last week, Wednesday maybe, whatever it was, Tuesday, down near the Air Force Academy and up in Monument, a very hilly course, and I was averaging 18 miles an hour for 107 miles. So on a flat course, when I'm not so tired and whatever, I think, plus, I had to stop at stoplights and, you know, things like that that always slow you down when you're on a training ride. Well, when you're in a race, you always go faster. So I think it's a reasonable time. All right. And then what about uh, the sort of meter problem when you have a meter cubed, right? So if I've got, um, if I want to convert uh, 3.7 cubic meters and I want to convert it to uh, cubic uh, uh, centimeters, what's the trick on that? You do it right at three times. So you can say 3.7 meter, meter, meter. You have to convert it three times. I'll show you a shortcut just in a minute, but let's do it the long way first. So you can go meter to centimeter three times. One meter is how many centimeter? 100, right? So you do this three times. So you can cancel the meter out three times. So 3.7 times 100 times 100 times 100 is a lot. I don't know. What does that come out to be?